Declan, I've, I've run into your coaching down in Clannagail. Uh, it's not just the senior team you're involved in, you're, you're coaching at underage as well. Yeah, I have um, lucky enough to have, uh, uh, we have two under 16 teams, a uh, girls team, and I'm involved with the under 12 boys as well, and I'm also the Dublin under 16 girls manager as well. Sounds like you're fairly addicted to, to GEA, and this is, is this filling the void of the playing days? Oh, I, don't, I don't know. I, t- I just I have to say I get great um, I get great energy and oxygen from the kids. They, you know, they're brilliant. They're they're, they're not the naivety, but the innocence is just brilliant to watch. And and then being part of a kid's journey, like you know, some of them girls I would have had in the cage since they were four years of age, and I've seen them now. Yeah, they're nearly an adult now, and it's been wonderful to see that journey. Uh, with them, and there's been lots of ups and downs, but we've had a fantastic. We've had a really, really good spell with them. Um, they're a brilliant bunch, and they're just a great. And I, I actually think it's a really good thing for when you're at the senior level. It's so, it's so harsh, um, words, but so it's, it's no harm to you all the kids to bring it back down, keep your feet firmly on the ground because if something could happen at under 12 match that could tactically challenge you, and you think that you because you're working with a double team or something, you could easily just... It doesn't work like that. I expect you to have the answer. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't. <laughs> it's very tough. But with kids as well, you must face straps, you must face you know, parents not being happy, you must face yeah. everything. Yeah. It's in a whole different emotional roller coaster ride and then the expectations of what people... And the only, the only really good piece that I have in the sport, the sport you reaffirm to the parents, it is only a sport, it's for the kids to enjoy and to get out and participate. There is probably a little bit of overemphasis on winning and I think particularly at kids level it's not that context but I, li- I like to think I have a good perspective on it um, and for the kids to go out and play and enjoy their sport whether they win or lose is irrelevant but once they're enjoying each other's company doing something that they're good at I think you can't get any better than that really. mm. um, Do you see much difference in kids nowadays and like technology is the first thing that people talk about and kids are buried in their phones Maybe that leads to more anxiety, lack of resilience with people these days. Actually, I'm not sure if the two are connected, but perhaps they are. But do you find a difference? In kids these days? Oh, absolutely. I think. Um, and the one thing about coaching as well, the really good coaches, they they connect the sensitivities of people and kids particularly, and their how they're feeling and how they're acting and why they act like that. And you get a little bit more response emotionally from the kids quicker than you would an adult. Mm. Um, but it's really important to see that and to be able to help them in that because sport gives them an opportunity to, to reflect their personality sometimes. You know, you'd have a hot head and the girls have their hot head on the pitch. And, but you then get them to understand how to handle that situation. And you'd like to think that off the field then they might handle the same situation in a different uh, situation for them. So it's, 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 it's really good, but I think the coaches' standards are getting much better and there's a lot more connectivity to what how people are feeling and how they're acting and I think it's, uh, it's really good for kids to be involved in sport if they're lucky enough to have that context because you can evolve really really well in that environment you know what I mean it can be a very very positive situation for them so to move on to the senior team now watching that Mayo game as a neutral was very very stressful especially in that first half obviously you know the bottom fell out in the second half yeah. and Dublin were supreme but for you on the sideline was it stressful the funny thing about it is, um, it's it, no, the kind of the game we're tro- so transfixed in what we're at and what we're doing and how we need to function. That the, I, I don't, when I go to watch a match, I love watching hurling, so I go to a hurling match and I'm totally involved in the emotion of it. Mm. But I, I'm a completely different person when I'm at a our matches, it just is completely zoned in what we have to do and how we need to function. Is that in terms of like trying to problem solve? Okay, we had an issue over and left wing back was safe, for yeah. example. Yeah. We need to figure out the solution. Is, is that what you mean? Yeah, absolutely. Like I'm lucky enough that we have a good connection with myself, Jim and Jason. So they're on the pitch and I'm up in the stand. And no disrespect, but you can't tactically see stuff when you're on the pitch. But you can see stuff, but there has to be a trust piece between the three of us to, to know that the information being relayed is, is what's required or likely to be required. But we get on really, really well. So. Um, and it's really important to see the tactical situations, particularly for a player or a high possession count. You just see things and you're able to respond and then um, watch it then for a couple of minutes and see does there any action you need to word or moving tactically or taking a player on or off that kind of situation. Because in, in the first half, Mayo probably played to their optimum. They were six, uh, sorry, eight points to six at half, half time in a good enough place. So there would have been big trust. Everyone on the management team at halftime to come up with the solutions that led to, to 
to what happened thereafter. So was that half time? Is the pressure on you at half time to come up with stuff? No, not really. I think um, I, 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 I didn't sense that. I kind of what I kind of sensed that the players needed was a little bit of resetting, a really little bit of refocus, and just acknowledge what was after happening, and then what we're going to do with the stuff. And I think just in the end of the day, it wasn't too much tactic. They just needed to work a little bit harder with a little bit more energy. I think they were a bit nervous in the first half, and I think they were tentative, but then they let go in the second half, and that was the observation that I had of them. And not so much too much tactic because we didn't change any players or anything. So we just needed to up their levels of energy and possibly just our process a bit sharper. But they did get two goal chances in the first half as well. So you know there was good chance. They, they did play relatively okay in the first half when you look back in it. So but again, the context of what we're doing at half time is just to give you a bit of information. So like when, you, when you're involved in days like this, and even if you think about Dublin against Kerry in the final, it's pretty mouth watering. Do you miss playing? Um, I, I, I suppose I do, but I don't get caught in that player coach thing. I'm compl- I know exactly where I am at the minute, and I know I know it can't be any different for me. I can't play anymore. That's just the reality of it. But I just love being with these guys. They're a very special group of players. It's a great friendship within the group. Um, the coaching group as well. We get on really, really well, and it's just nice to go train. It's nice to watch these guys train. To listen to the managers, have the crack and the banter like anybody else, and we've created an environment within this group which is similar to get off and see people say about the club. It can't be a club team and how they had the bond as they're growing up to each other. Each other. And this is, that sense of bond is now within this group that created that. Um, and it's just great to be involved. In what was your favourite thing about playing football? And it could be kick arounds, whatever it is. Um, but I just, I loved being able to express myself. I just loved to do something that was different. I always liked that. I, I played a lot, probably my best football at a six and a half back in the olden days. Uh, but I probably wasn't a six, I was probably more of a forward, but I always loved to make a, a mad, I always had in my head to make two or three mad runs up the field and <laughs> try and get a score or something, something different, but I always like to do something different, and I always like to be kind of a bit imaginative, that was what really gets me, and I just love watching players, uh, I do have a great admiration for players that function really, really well in the game, but I do like the magic, so yeah. Jack McCaffrey's, and yeah, it's just something special, or Paul Mannion. It's just fantastic. Yeah. Dave Clifford, well. David Clifford, Gini was unbelievable the other day. It's just fantastic, and you can see it in different. It doesn't necessarily always have to be a forward. Like there's some fantastic uh, goalkeepers, like Steve is just immense. So there's lots of players that you'd look at, and you'd be, you know, that's what I look at. That's what I like yeah. when I was playing, and that when I see the player doing it, that's what I really like as well when I'm watching. What was the last match you ever played competitively? No. And not necessarily junior, that it could be junior. Oh, I didn't actually do the junior gig thing. Ah. I didn't. No, <laughs> I know. <laughs> what a neat goal. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I was more terrified of the younger lads taking it out of me, to be honest, uh, breaking me down. I had terrible injuries with my heels um, at the latter part of my career. And I, I only had an operation on one of them uh, last uh, Christmas, so I, I'm, I'm afflicted by the running piece. <laughs> um, so I, I don't know, I was probably playing bridges or stuff, I don't know, but I haven't any context on it now. It's